So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are actually gonna do the Circle Lapgan Crochet Blanket. Now I have had my eyes on this for a long time because I really like the texture and I love the colors and what we're going to do is go through this. Now when you're doing round blankets or anything working from the square like going from the middle outward, a, a, a gauge is really kind of necessary because if you're off in any way it can ruffle. So what we need to pay attention to in this one here is rounds one to three it will equal four inches by the time you get there. So you're gonna wanna check that. If it's really off from four inches you will experience that this will probably ruffle out on you. So if it's um, too small therefore you might have some buckling so it'll wanna fold up like a bowl and if it's too loose then it will probably just wanna ruffle out. So you have to decide what's gonna work for you. In this pattern here we have a stripe sequence. So these here row, uh, work row uh, round one with A, two rounds with B, three rounds with C and so you're going to work through the sequence. So work these 47 rounds for the stripe sequence. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. I'm gonna be using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre just as this tutorial sample today and so it does transition between the shading, shading of color. So if you wanna avoid that kind of thing you probably get away with it too. Now this pattern, the reason why I wanted to film it is that A, the texture caught me but the repeat is actually here and the repeat is actually after round number 13. So, it's so round number 13 is the end of the repeat and it says keep the stripe sequence and repeat rounds 4 through 13 three more times. So you're just gonna kinda repeat those rounds. So you'll notice that it will naturally wanna uh, grow out on itself. Once you have that done three times then you are going to repeat rounds 12 and 13 once and then repeat rounds number four and five and then you're done. So that's kind of the neat idea. So I would assume that there's 47 rounds because it's stated that with the stripe sequence. So keep an eye on the color. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take you through this. There is time markers in the video description of what is called as video chapters and each one of these rounds are indicated by a time marker so that you can speed ahead. So when you have to refer back you will be able to find the rows or the rounds in this case and be able to click that and go backward in time in order to complete that. So without further ado we are going to be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and we make sure that you do check your gauge when you get there and let's begin. So let's start with the beginning. So I just started using this Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. I'm kind of in love with it. <laughs> I don't wanna marry it but I'm pretty, I'm pretty close. So I'm gonna start off with the slip knot and this is classified as an easy level pattern because the repeating is actually pretty easy. So they say, we'll find out won't we. So we're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and slip stitch to the beginning chain and form that center ring. So when you go around the first one just put this so that it's around the ring itself and therefore to get stuck underneath so you don't have to sew that in later. Let's be officially begin round number one. Let's begin the first round, round number one. We're going to chain four which will count as a double crochet and a chain one space. So one, two, three and four and just simply just come into the center of the ring and double crochet in. So you're looking for a total count of 12 posts. So this is classified as one with a chain one space this is the second one, chain one to create another space and then back in. So you're gonna wanna go all the way around doing a double crochet and then a chain one after. So the secret is, is that you're looking to have 12 of those posts completed by the time you get all the way around. So please do that. That's round number one. I'll see you at the end of this round in a moment. So I'm putting in my last double crochet here. So you should be able to count 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Make sure you do a chain one space after the final one and then attach it to the third chain up. So if you're following the color sequence then just take care of that and uh, move on to your next one. So the next color starts in color, uh, sorry in round number two. So just keep an eye on that and we're gonna just continue with the same color here on camera and I'll show you how to adjust for that just in case that you are wanting to do it the way that I'm doing it here. If you went over the tail end like you're supposed to then just cut that out and therefore that'll be out of your mind and moving on to round number two. So if you're starting a new color you're gonna wanna start in any of the chain one spaces but currently with 
I'm not changing color. I'm just gonna continue. So the first thing I need to do if you're gonna do it my way is that you're just going to just slip stitch to get yourself to the chain one space. In each space you're gonna do the same things but we have to start the first space first and that'll be a chain three which will be your first double crochet and then two more double crochets inside the same space. So every space now going forward is going to have three double crochets in it. So just keep on moving around. So three double crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of row number two in just a moment. At the end of round number two you should have three double crochets in each of the spaces. So you're just going to join it to the top of the first chain three to finish and that was round number two. So it's looking pretty good so far. So let's go on to round number three. In round number three we're gonna start doing the spokes that you can see in the model sample. So we're gonna start off first right exactly where you are and it doesn't matter um, which yarn you're using. So just chain one and single crochet into the first chain three that was below. You are now then going to create space for next time and so then you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and you're going to skip the next stitch and go into the next one and single crochet and then you're gonna do a front post treble two rows below which will be around this one here. So wrap that hook twice and come all the way down and just come in from the front and just pop it to the other side and just treble all the way back. So that's a front post treble. So I want you to visualize each one of these groups of three as the uh, space in between spokes. So the first one out is going to be a single crochet, chain three and then jump to the third one of that same spot and then jump on down. So front post treble down. Like that. Okay, so it's the first one. It's gonna be a single crochet, chain three, come to the other side of that same spot. So it's the third one and then a front post treble down. So please do this all the way around for round number three. So I'm coming all the way around to the last section here. So I'm just jumping on over and don't forget I still have to come on down and do that front post treble right at the very end. And then I'm just going to attach it to the first single crochet. So now we're gonna lay this down and we're now going to do a gauge check. So I haven't checked the gauge off camera but the gauge said that rounds number one through three should equal about four inches. So here we go. Look at that. That's honest to God true. So I know that I can continue to use this yarn and this hook and it should be okay. So now we're gonna move on to round number four. Next. So round number four. If you're doing the color sequence then what you're going to want to do is that you're gonna wanna fasten this off and then start in the next chain three space. If you're doing exactly what I'm doing just slip on over. So if you're attaching new yarn just attach and then just chain three. So one, two, three and in this case here you're gonna put three more double crochets into the same spot. So each of the chain three spaces that you have there are going to be a total of four double crochets in each of those. So carrying on to the next chain three space just put in four double crochets and then continue to do that all the way around and this is round number four. When you get all the way back around you'll have your four into the last chain three space and so you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that you started with and that was round number four. Let's move on to round number five. In round number five it's gonna be very much how we did round number three. The difference is, is that the spacing will be a little bit bigger. So you're just going to chain three where you're sitting and you're going to apply a single crochet. So look at each groups of these four as individuals on their own. So now you're just going to chain four. So last time it was chain three so it's chain four and then jump to the last one of the grouping of four. Okay and now see this one here the front post treble way down here. You're going to want to grab that up so that you can make it uh, come up. So just wrap the hook twice. Go around that front post treble from before and then just complete that and that will keep that spoke moving up. So come to this next grouping of four. So the first one is gonna be a single crochet, chain four. Come to the last one of that grouping of four, single crochet and then jump on down and collect that next front post treble from two rows below. Please do this all the way around. This is round number five. 
So coming around to number five, I'm just continuing the pattern as I know it and don't forget the last stitch is gonna be this front post treble two rows below. Like that and that will keep that up and just join it with the slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. And that was round number five. Let's move on to round number six. So this is where you will add a new color if you want new color into this chain four space. If you're continuing like I am, just slip stitch to that space to get you there. So continue then with chaining at three and then put four double crochets into this section here. So there's four double crochets. So with the chaining of three and the four that you have that gives you a total of five. Once you have that done, you are then going to just go to the next space that you have here and you're gonna put in five double crochets and I want you to do that all the way around. And I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So coming up to the end of round number six, I've got my five double crochets in each and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first chain three and then that will conclude that round. Let's move on to round number seven next. Round number seven is going to do exactly what we've done in the past is just we're going to make it even bigger. So we're going to just chain up one and single crochet in the first top of the chain three. You're then going to just chain a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five and go to the last one of that grouping of five and single crochet and then jump on down to collect that front post treble from two rows below. So the next grouping of five is here. So you'll single crochet in the first one and then chain five to jump. So one, two, three, four, five and then jump to the last one, single crochet and then come on down and do a front post treble around the existing front post treble from before. Please do that for round number seven. I'll see you at the end of the round. So coming up to the end of round number seven, the last one, don't forget you have to jump on down and then just join it to the beginning single crochet. That a complete number seven, let's move on to round number eight. So I'm liking the easiness of this pattern so far but you know what, let's continue. If you're adding new color, you'll join it to the space and if you're continuing like I am, just slip stitch on over. So this one here, round number eight, you're going to just uh, chain three. So one, two, three and put in five additional double crochets there. So one, two, three, four and five. And then in the next space here, just put in six double crochets. So there's this five here plus the chain three gives you six. So just six double crochet in each of these spaces going around. I'll see you at the end of the round. This is round number eight. Coming around on number eight, you know the routine by now. You're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Let's move along now to round number nine. It's uh, just turning up a little bit but don't worry about that. I wanna just show you that because that is just a fact of what's gonna happen but then it should lay back flat again once you continue to work further. So I notice that in between each one of these rounds here. So let's move on to round number nine. In round number nine right where you're sitting you're just going to chain one and then you'll put in a single crochet there and now chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and jump to the last one of that same group. So you're skipping over four double crochets. So single crochet and then do a front post double crochet sorry front post treble all the way down to the last one. So in the next group start off with a single crochet just like that and chain a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and then just continue to come on down to the next side here. So single crochet and then jump on down to the front post treble next. So just continue. You already know what to do. You're just making it slightly bigger. So let's continue that journey around. So at the end of round number nine, you are coming down to do that front post treble. Don't forget that and then slip stitched to the beginning single crochet. Let's move along to round number 10. In round number 10, this chain space here is where you're going to add your new color if you want to and if you're continuing like I am, just slip stitch to take you there first. So let's begin. You're going to chain three and then there will be six additional double crochets in that same spot. So let's count those together. So one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. So with the chain three and those six, that gives you the total count of, a, of seven. So each one of these spaces will have seven double crochets in them. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 10. So coming all the way around on round number 10, you know the routine just slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So question is about to be answered and if you didn't have the question, um, I'll tell you what the question was. But um, next round, number 11 is when the game changes. Let's begin to look at that further. So when we look at the model, we notice that the spokes really never get that far apart. So if we continue in the same manner of growing out, these spokes will get further and further away from each other but I notice in the model it doesn't. So this tells me that a new spoke is added at a certain point. So round number 11 is when a new spoke gets added in so that this divides off and so then it allows you to do a repeat because I was wondering how it can do a repeat so easily with just only 13 rounds being shown in the instructions. So round number 11 is going to have us so that we're gonna subdivide off so that we create a new spoke and we're gonna be using front post double crochets in a strategy strategic point of view so that we can divide this spoke directly in half so we end up with a new spoke right in the middle. Let's begin number 11. Using the seven that we have in each side that we're going to create the spokes, a new spoke. So we're gonna continue with these spokes here and we're gonna be creating a new one right directly in the middle of this. So right where we are sitting we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the first one which is the top of the chain three. Chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next. And now the next stitch which is the middle one of the grouping of seven, so it's the fourth one in, you're gonna do a front post double crochet and that's your new spoke. You're going to single crochet the very next one that's in line. So if you're looking at it from this point of view, you're skipping over the one that's directly behind it because that's included and so it's the third one before the end. So it's a single crochet and then chain one and single crochet in the last. I'll go through this again. So once you get that last one done, it's coming on down. So it's gonna be a front post treble. So remember how we came in and we were doing these in the past. We were doing single crochet, front post treble down and then single crochet on the other side. So the middle one is creating that, that strategy for that to happen. So you have the single crochet, you have the front post doubled down and then the single crochet down on the other side. So when we come to grab this one in the, in the next time, it's gonna be more defined. So let's continue and show you again. So you're going to single crochet the first one and then chain one. Skip the next one and single crochet the next. You're going to do a front post double crochet around the existing one just directly below and then single crochet the one right after chain one, skip one and single crochet in the next and then jump on down and collect this one way down here. And then you'll do each side like that. So please do all your sides like that and you will see a new spoke just lightly emerging but it will be very noticeable next time we have to jump down to collect that in the future. I'll see you at the end of round number 11. At the end of round number 11, don't forget you're still going to do that front post treble down, uh, crochet down and then you're just going to slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet. So now we have a new spoke that has been in position and ready for next time and let's move on to round number 12. So round number 12 when we started way back here, we started with three double crochets that were in the same space. We're doing that here again. So this is going to allow us to create that, that momentum to can have the pattern continue. So if you're joining new color, you'll join it in the space but the first chain one space is where you're gonna slip stitch to if you're doing it like I am and then chain a total of three and then two more double crochet into that same space like that. Now you'll come to the next chain one space so it's just on the other side of here and then you're going to put in three double crochets there too. So each chain one space all the way around is going to get three double crochets and this will allow it to open up and to create a good time. So let's uh, continue to do that and three double crochets in each and I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So finishing up round number 12, you're just going to go into the last space before you come into the end. So that's just normal and then you're just going to slip stitch it to the beginning chain three. 
So now we're gonna continue to round number 13 which is going to be the end of the repeat. I believe at the end of this you're going to want to damp block this and we'll talk about that later. So let's begin round number 13. So round number 13 refers to jumping on down. So one jump is to a front post treble. The other jump is to a front post double crochet. So it says uh, continued round with the front post treble around a front post stitch. That is stitch is just a general term. So that it's just referring to that instead of complicating it with the pattern. So you're just going to just chain up one and just look at each individual threes like we did before in the very beginning of this. And you're going to single crochet and then chain three. So one, two, three and then jump to the other side of that grouping of three. So just skipping one stitch, single crochet and do a front post double cro uh, front post treble crochet to the front post stitch below. In this case it was the front post double. So now you can really see it. It's going to pick up and be defined. So coming to the next group, start with the first one, single crochet, chain three, do the last one, single crochet and then jump on down. In this case it's to the front post treble. I'll show one more time. So next grouping of three, single crochet, chain three, come to the last one of that same group and then jump on down which is to the front post double from before. So you can see that when you come around on this round you're going to have double the amount of spokes by the time you get all, all the way around. Well it's gonna be very obvious because you've already created it before. So let's do that and this is the, going to be the end of round number 13 in just a moment. So when you get around at number 13 you've come down on the front post treble and then you're just going to join it and then that's the end of the repeat. So let's chitter chatter and let's talk about what's next because now it's a matter of repeating the steps that I've already shown you. At the end of this project you're going to want to wet block this. So we'll just get it damp and then lay it flat to dry and that is called damp blocking. So in the instructions we are then going to repeat back and you're going to keep the stripe sequence going and you're going to do rounds number four through 13 three more times. So just reverse the video back to go to round number four and play it back through 13 if you need to and you'll do that three times. Once you have that done three times then you're going to repeat rounds number 12 and 13 just once. Then you're going to repeat rounds number four and five and then that's it. You're done. So when you're happy with your project and you have it done then what you can do is that you can just continue to just fasten off. Just pull it through and you're going to want to use a tapestry needle to get rid of this tail. So any uh, tails that you did have it because you've had to change yarn balls and colors and stuff. So any of this. So just turn it to the back side of your blanket or your afghan or throw whatever you're gonna call it and just ram it through some of the stitch work. Avoid coming out the front and come through once and when you pull it through pull it taut but don't change the shape. Go back through a slightly different path a second time and then back through one more time. So make sure you go back and forth three times and you'll wanna do that with any of your tails that you have. So it's a kind of a neat pattern. I, I like the simplicity of this idea in the sense that it's easy to remember and again just block it and then you'll have that roll and that's it. So this is using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and you can see that we've gone from a darker gray and lightened up along the way. Let's uh, continue along and I'll see you again next time here in the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. This is the Circle Lab Bye bye.